Hey, so we've all seen ants. Uh, here's a picture of one somewhere on the screen. It doesn't look like much, right? Alone, a single ant might not feel like something to write home about. Most times she'll be pretty small and she'll be a she. Uh, she'll also be fairly vulnerable and non-threatening. But here's the thing. Ants are social insects and in large numbers, they can be a lot of trouble. Ant abilities differ widely from one species to the next. And there are more than 12,000 known species. Again, that's just the ones we know about. They outnumber us a million to one, coordinating massive operations to provide food, shelter, and defense to their colony. As any myrmecologist will tell you, that's the uh, fancy name for ant experts, chief among an ant's superpowers is its ability to communicate. Ants primarily communicate through the release of chemicals called pheromones. Generally, the glands responsible for these pheromones are located in the head, thorax, gaster, and legs. They're usually released from the mandibles, the gaster, and the cuticle. That's the hard outer layer of an ant's body. Ants detect these pheromones using their antenna, and truth be told, they're pretty good at it. So let's say you're at a picnic. You're unwrapping, uh, I don't know, a sandwich or whatever, uh, a roast beef panini, and you see one lone ant. That is a scout that's going to return with a massive wave of coordinated tiny fiends on a mad quest to get your roast beef panini by any means necessary. But here's how the scout hips the rest of her crew to the potential heist. As she's foraging, she's laying down pheromones, kind of like how Hansel and Gretel laid down breadcrumbs in that fairy tale, which was, what's the name of that one? Hansel and Gretel were in it. All right, well, when and if she does find a large source of food, she hightails back to the ant headquarters, releasing more of the pheromone along the way, creating a trail that other ants in her colony can follow. And the better the food source, the stronger this trail. As other foragers arrive to assist, they also lay down pheromones and reinforce the trail. And like everything with ants, the way they treat these trails really depends on their species. Some species of ants will only follow their own chemical trails, while others will follow anyone. They'll pick up on pheromones from other ant species. Ants also communicate by touching each other's cuticles and deriving information about each other from hydrocarbons they find there. The different types of cuticular hydrocarbons carbons and there are a lot each have their own odor indicating numerous things about the individual ant from its home colony to the task it's assigned like foraging ants also communicate through movement like vibration or touching each other during tandem running which is interesting enough to be its own episode leafcutter ants for instance vibrate to indicate things like danger or a particularly tasty leaf there's one very important distinction we should make here Ants do not communicate directly. Instead, they use what's called modulatory communication. This means they don't decide consciously to send out a message saying, hey, go find some food, my dudettes. And other ants don't think, ah, crap, it's hot outside, but all right. The signals that ants send only increase the probability that other ants will change their behavior in response to that stimuli. And as we can see, it is working out pretty well for them. This leads me to a question, who is more successful overall, ants or humans? Thanks so much for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments and stay tuned for more brain stuff.